Sports fans, we are here live on a fr uh, Wednesday evening in downtown Toronto. Surrounded by about 80 people playing board games. It's a little loud. It is the center of nerddom in Toronto. 401 Games. At Young and Wellesley. And we are your hosts. I'm Tim Slice. I'm Devin. And we are about to cast another exciting PTL top cut match. This is the second of the two top four matches between... Wait, you did one without me? I did do one without you. Yeah, we did one. Uh, How'd that go? Uh, you know what? We're going to get into that. Are we? Right? We're, not, we're not just going to rush to it. It has to be a slow burn. I'd rather not. <laughs> uh, Devin, of course, our fearless leader from the Prototype Toronto League, uh, joining us to cast after just playing his own top four match. Sadly, not going the way he had uh, planned or expected, unfortunately. But you know what? That means that he gets to sit next to me and uh, and cast this is what it promises to be a, a very good match between two excellent players. Uh, I'm going to take the opportunity to go through the uh, the player on the right, our scum player tonight. And Devin, you're the sitting Imperial uh, expert. I'm going to let you do the one on the left. Because if I did read your PTL season card correctly, I think you flew eight Imperial games and one Rebel game. Sorry, two Rebel. Yeah, one. You only had one that one chopper list where you had a ridiculous chopper with an E-wing. or some, Yeah, some I played a rando game. <laughs> yeah. Now, what happened when you played that Rando game? Do you want to walk us through a little bit about the PTL and uh, and how you got your bonus points? Like, what is, like, how do you make top cut? Like, what are the points involved? Like, how do you make those points? What do you have to do? So, by playing, you get two points. By winning, you get two points. And by flying, or at least this season, we had extra bonus points you could earn. So, if you flew an E-Wing that wasn't Cornhorn, you got an extra point. If you flew a Punisher, you got an extra point. If you flew a, uh, a Kirax fighter, you got an extra point. And if you flew a random match, you got an extra point. And if you flew one of those ships in a random match, you got two points in that round. Hashtag double bonus points, Devil. Double bonus points. A lot of people did that. A lot of people flew the random matches. They're pretty popular in the league. And uh, you get the random map. Fab's squadron generator is what we uh, what we use. Now uh, I don't know. He's improved. This is this is a complaint, sir. A complaint about Fab Squadron Generator. I hope he's it is, watching. It is getting less random. These lists are getting better. They're getting like, they're becoming real lists. It's amazing when you hit that optimize button on the on the. It's squadron a disaster. Generator. It's, it's a it's disaster. It's no longer putting, like you still get a turretless hawk every now and again. Or I actually played two random matches this season and got two turretless Y wings, Horton Psalm and Cavill. Just, look, just just fly better. I did fly better. Just, I just won get both good. Of those. Just thank joust you. with them. And, I won and both of them by one point after the last die roll <laughs> when time expired. Yep. So you're flying something like that. Uh, you're going to get those bonus points. Everybody who got into the top eight got um, maxed out those bonus points, except for Christian, who just won a lot. He didn't even play seven matches. No, he just won real hard. He went 500 nothing and just like. And just like scraped into the top eight and was like, I guess. <laughs> And he lost by... Uh, Being the, good, winning games. I mean, that's just... I mean, he didn't win his top eight match no, but for was, Christian. No, but that, that was a nice that edge was, that was a, that was a, That's our first video up this season. That was a nail-biter. Yeah, so we're uh, we're coming to you with our third video um, here, and then we're going to talk a little about the players. So why don't you tell us a little about our player on the left? Well, uh, I'm going I'm to start by saying I didn't fly scum this season, Tim, because I like a challenge. You do like a challenge like by a not challenge. flying scum. Yeah. I will counter that and say I challenge you to fly a scum list. And I did fly scum. I can tell you didn't look at it. I flew three Kiraxes all together. No, you did. Yeah, you definitely yeah. flew a scum match. I just want to yeah. say that, you know, flying a scum list is is fine. It's just if you want to challenge yourself, to your sure. point, that's what the PTL is all about, providing a forum for people to yeah. try, you know, challenge themselves and try new innovative stuff. Now, Kelvin, yeah. uh, going back to his list, now, he was, he's been in the salt mines all afternoon because they said they were going to play a non-meta game. And uh, Joe's flying James Ling's uh, Lingdenberry sauce here. I, I got a challenge. His store, champ, his store champ winning, store champ runner-up list here. But uh, Kelvin is, uh, he came, he was the, the second top place Imperial at Naboo uh, after Jeff Asiri, who I just played. He's also uh, made like five PTL cuts in a row. Yeah, I mean, he's an excellent player. He's probably the best dogfighter I know. Like, when you he's, talk about ships that don't have turrets, that don't have stupid janky abilities, and are literally just, I'm going to outfly you. I'm yeah. going to make my ships be where I want them to be and where you don't want them to be. 
I gotta say he's gotta be among the best. I'm gonna have to say he's an artist with the Sinars and the Inquisitor. You know, if he if anyone and you can see him committing down here on the bottom of the map here, everything at Fenrau. If Fenrau dies, the game is his. Now our player, Omega Leader can solo the rest of the list himself, as far as I'm concerned. It's quite true. I mean we, we understand um, pretty much what all these pieces do. They've been in previous PTL matches as well. Pure Sabak, of course, rolls an extra attack die until he has two damage cards. Omega Leader locks down all of your dice mods. Uh, if she has a target lock on you, Inquisitor treats all attacks like range one. And to Devin's point, that 17 point Sinar test pilot is a blocker and a half. On, oh, he's great. Unless you happen to be squared off against the new most efficient 12 points to spend in the game of X-Wing, which is the PS1 Sunny Bounder. Can I have an Academy Pilot with that ability, please? That'd be great. If you had an Academy Pilot that allowed you to just add a result... When Whenever you, you roll, when all you, dice are the same. Yeah, when you roll your attack dice, if you roll the same results... Right. So if I'm at range 2 and I roll 2 hits, or 2 eyes, or 2 blanks, I add a third result. Sunny Bounder is amazing. For the part of the part of the part of the magic is the target lock. Yeah, because the the part of the, the ability actually reads whenever you roll or re-roll dice. Uh, yes and no, right? Because if you roll two blanks, you add a blank. Right. You don't spend the target lock on those two blanks. Right. You re-roll three dice. But I mean, just just getting a little bit more into the, oh, you're saying I roll pilots. hit, I roll hit blank, I re-roll the blank, I get another hit, I add another hit. Yeah, but you're thinking yeah. only defensively. Think about think about uh, sorry, think you're, you're thinking only offensively. Think about defensively too. If you've got Sunny Bounder next to Sirisu, for example, which is another seek, and then you've re-rolled that defensive dice into an eyeball or an evade. You can then add another result. It's much less likely on three dice. True. Because with two dice, it's almost. So I think it's over a thirty percent chance that you're going to roll the same doubles. two results. Yeah. yeah. And uh, flying tie fighters, I know you're getting those doubles all the time. Precisely. Now, unfortunately, um, it looks like Kelvin has read Joe's layout. Now, Joe is a tremendous player. He's a rebel player. That is it. That was right. just what I was going to say. Joe is a tremendous player, but he is a rebel player. So although he has brought. A list that has won now two store championships in the Greater Toronto area and placed in. Does four Jackie's of them. Does Jackie's count? Jackie's counts. Does it? It does. Jackie knows why we're chirping him. Jackie right now. knows why we're, chir we're chirping him because he was the judge last week on the. Uh, we're chirping him because the number of players at that store championship. You know what? It still won. <laughs> he still won. He still had to beat Eric Z. He still top, had to beat Eric top Z. Top ranked in the uh, the North American rankings. So. There you go. Yeah. I mean, I think Kelvin's going all in. He's gonna try and bring everybody in and just delete. He's gonna put all guns on Fen Rao. Well, this is the the challenge with this list. I mean, the potential here is huge. You've got Fen Rao at range one who rolls five dice. You've got Genesis Red who rolls four, uh, three dice. Yeah. And then you've got Nadru where if no other ships at range two, that homing missile is six dice. So five I, dice. And I'm not gonna lie, I think Joe's got Nadru too close to Fen. Well, that's the thing is that Joe is a rebel player. And he's got four scum little ships here. Like, and, if you think about... And Kelvin Omega. is just dragging him to the side of the board. If you think so of Inquisitor's uh, arc right now, right? Listeners, you need to listen to my hands, okay? Where I'm pointing on the screen. Because they can do that. Yeah, they can. So if you look at... If you envision his arc right now, there's very little places that Fen Rao can go that's not going to be in two ships arc or sort of three ships arc. I would say at least three or four. Especially you know. if the Inquisitor at the back, sorry, the Sinar at the back of this list uh, manages to catch up. But yeah, go on. Yeah, no, that's that's it. You know, he's cast, Calvin's cast a wide net. Um, I'm not sure if that was the right move with a Mega Leader. Maybe a, a straight would have been nice. Yeah, he, uh, he can't barrel roll but, uh, uh, right at this point. I mean, a, a hard one clears that either direction, so he can follow pretty hard. But you've got it, three pilot skill eights shooting after Fenrao. I don't know if Fenrao does a five forward and deletes Sabak. That means he lives. If he does anything less than that, he's at range two. He's not getting auto thrusters. He's not having. He's not getting auto thrusters at all from the Inquisitor. He's not having a good time. Yeah, I mean, truth be told, I'm really not trying to cause any any guff here, but I. Oh, played... it's a little faster than I expected from the Drew. I expected the one bank to try and keep him at range two. I think he's trying to get that missile off uh, and then get an opportunity to trigger scavenger crane. 
It's a great thing. I mean, the, 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 the architecture of the list is based on James Ling, uh, who's a gent who's joined us in Toronto from the UK. Brilliant Bristol, Bristol, player. I believe. He's from Bristol. We're not going to hold that against him because oh, my, fam my family are all Chelsea fans, but it's all good. Fenrau bailing. Disengaging. Joe knowing that Fenrau no, can be an offensive piece or a defensive piece. Making not what players. you normally see from Fenrau. True, but now ben Fen has to barrel roll out of range too so that Nadru can actually do uh, his pilot ability, which adds the bonus dice. So I, I, he might still be in range two. That's fairly close. The brilliance of this list is the fact that if you get Fen in range one, you're, showing, you're shooting a, a ridiculous amount of dice. Oh, that's interesting, Joe. Well, Fen's got plenty of greens, and I think that actually puts Fen closer. Than it he does. Was a second He's ago. back into range two. This just goes to show. I mean, I mean, this is the first time Joe's flying this list. I'm fairly sure. I think he probably had maybe one practice rep uh, with it in the last week, and just said to himself, "You know what? This looks good. I'll try this," which yeah. is a great. And and one of the James's uh, one of the reasons he started. It's a PS9. Oh, that that's not what you want to see. Re it's homing missiles. Re keep the, the, dice the homing missile. And oh. chips for two. Chips for two. And evaded and, cleanly. There you go. No, a mega leader just laughing at that PS9 the, the shot. The premise there. that Joe that, that James started this list was a mega leader was, shooting back range three at the Drew, juking nothing needed to juke. Taking oh two. man, that's that's the Drew taking two set. That yep. is the engagement that Kelvin needed there. Yeah, I mean. Um, for Nadru to lose to, I mean, Nadru is the most, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Pliable out of all four of these ships on the. Because Expendable? The the, pliable in the sense that he's, he's soft. He, he just goes down. He's, it's a Z95. It's a very powerful Z95 at PS9 with scavenger crane and a missile that he can get back. But the fact of the matter is here is that Joe has, to our earlier point, allowed himself to be completely outpositioned by Kelvin's forces. And now Kelvin, even though he's got lower PS ships, yeah. can actually now just say to himself, I get to choose which one of Joe's aces I'm going to delete first. I might take a lump or two to do it, yeah. but now Joe's had to decide himself, uh, I'm going to be too close. Well, Joe, in this in this exchange, has essentially exchanged the Drew for nothing, right? That's really unfortunate. We're going to see like a one bank in from the Inquisitor, Sabak's gonna get the heck out of there. Omega Leader's gonna engage or or fend off some Sikhs, and we're gonna. Nadru's gonna be deleted, and he's gonna try and move on Fen again. Like I don't think. I think that Omega Leader is going to one turn left upboard and try and target lock number four, yeah. which is Sunny Bounder. You know what? A five forward, target lock focus deletes pure sabak before it shoots and i think that puts joe in a much better position and you can see how kelvin's positioned the sign art to block the greens from that maneuver that is what he expected to happen and, well, it's true uh, the sign art was acting as bait but now he's at the back of the thing he, he's keeping the sign art back there to try and block some of the k turns behind his aces yeah with the higher ps ships which is just brilliant you look at kelvin's formation here and it's it's bloody textbook Plus, we've got number three, the Sikh Genesis Red, who's drastically out of position with that Mangler Cannon here. Joe here in this list, originally crafted by James Ling, was actually a heavy laser cannon and a concussion missile, which I like better, to tell you the truth. I know that homing yeah. missile gives you the mod with a target lock, despite not having to fire it, but that combo of scavenger crane... Guy, uh, concussion missile gives you the blank mod. The chips that gives you a blank mod. You're almost guaranteeing three hits to four or five hits on four on five dice. You know what I mean? Like with the reroll, if you don't boost into range two, you got it. Yeah, yeah. Like Joe here, unfortunately, went to your point a little bit too fast. Uh, with a sunny turn. Bounder also coming in fast, right? Yeah, this is a tough spot for Sonny to be in. He's got a barrel roll to avoid that rock. Otherwise, he's not going to be doing much blocking. I expected a, a bank maneuver here. But he's trying to clear the path, I suppose, for Gensis Red. Yeah, he's trying to get Sonny in a position where Sonny can actually do some blocking and deny these aces their actions, which is ultimately the plan. Like, it, Joe has to um, find a way, if he's going to lose Nadru, to trade it for something. Because if yeah, Kelvin... See, if Kelvin gets a ship advantage over this guy, Kelvin's list is nothing to shake a stick at. In my mind, Kelvin already has a ship advantage. Nadru is dead. 
Yeah. He's gonna he's gonna have to spend some time shooting it this round. But by the Drew so is, the aileron uh, one boost from the tie striker there, and then I'm guessing uh, three four. Ah uh, no, just the one. He's, he's gonna he, put him right there. He wants to be nice and slow, so he can delete. Uh, well, Drew's gonna move right into range one, and Sabak's gonna get a five die shot on him. Or he's gonna bump, and the Inquisitor's gonna finish him off. I mean, it's, he's a dead man walking. Inquisitor doing the three bank there. That's the uh, move I was expecting as well. I think the Inquisitor is going to try and boost target lock to try and make sure that uh, Madrew dies here. Just out of range. Just out of range on Sunny. That's unfortunate. He's going to focus and not push the limit. Interesting. Wants to be able to go fast the following turn. Yeah, here we go. So he's going to try and get the target lock on someone. Let's see who Kelvin fixes. You know, it's interesting, Dev, at this point, where I can mention that... Um, I told you that hard one cleared. You didn't need to tell me the hard one cleared. I knew the hard one cleared. Nah, I don't believe I've you. seen you call enough hard ones <laughs> clearing. So, yeah, I just wanted to call out the fact that... Um, can Gensis... I expected Gensis to go a little faster with Sonny's maneuver. I was expecting a three bank as well. So he's not going to be able to target lock anything from that distance. I guess he's figuring with his cannon he doesn't need a range bonus, so... This is a perfect opportunity to take a mango. Joe reading shot. the card, trying to. So with Genesis Red, if you take a target lock on somebody, you are then assigned the same number of focus and evade tokens that that ship has. Now he might be able to target lock Omega Leader, but but you he wants to shoot. Yeah, he wants to shoot Sabak. And interestingly enough, that's why Kelvin. Oh, it is in. Ah. Uh, all right. It's the new camera angle. It's messing me up there, Tim. That is. Our folks, uh, our, our wonderful supporters at BWTV Live casting the match again for us this evening on a Wednesday night in downtown Toronto. Now, is this over the rock? This is going to be... That is not what I expected at all. It's over the rock, and it's bumping in. Yeah. So if Nadrew takes a crit direct hit, he's just dead here. Yep. Joe deciding he does not want any of Pure Sabox nonsense. A one damage is oh there's that's a crit. A, crit. a one damage is better than a uh, yeah thanks Joe okay one damage is better than five damage from a range one pierce a box shot and the threat is direct hit direct hit goodbye is a dead Z95 now what was I saying earlier you were saying the Z95s are very pliable I believe the word I used uh, you was. you were saying pliable yeah, what... I said it was a, a non-existent ship already well there you go. Fenrau still on the board, and keeping in mind that Fenrau is just as dangerous with one health as he is with that four is health. that is what Kelvin needed. I mean, uh, I don't know, man. Like this is that's rough for Joe. It's very rough for Joe. I mean, if Genesis Red can land two damage, including a crit, with a Mangler Cannon on Pure Sabak here and negate Pure Sabak's Pilot he, ability. He does have three shots on Pierce Sabak, but Pierce Sabak is there to die. That is that is his job. Is a cruise missile at yeah, this point. It, I mean, he's always a cruise missile. Don't put frames on him. What are you doing? That's a mistake. Come on, Kelvin. It's true. Range three with a rock. Um, lightweight frames pretty uh, important. Fen. Uh, gonna. Oh, he's deciding to shoot uh, Genesis Red first. Target lock, target focus, lock and focus, and then hit becomes a crit. Yep, it becomes a crit with a Mangler Cannon. There we go. Because Mangler Cannons do that. Hit crit. So that's... that's. Kelvin rolling four dice with focus, two evades. Why is he rolling four dice? Because it's range three obstructed there, Dev. Oh, it was obstructed. Oh, right, of yep. course. I mean, Lightweight Frame didn't even proc. It did not involve in that part, in that case. You're absolutely right. Fen taking a shot, range three. Two evades. Is that die cocked? Uh, it's up to them. It's I mean, we're not opponent. grassers here. You know what? The cock die rule is a very simple rule. Look at your opponent. Do you, do, you agree, do you agree if the die is cocked? Great. Do you disagree if the die is cocked? Call a judge. So oh, I that. Th yep, there you go. These two gents uh, known each other a very long time, as many of us have in the PTL. Uh, we got tons of new players this year, yeah, which is absolutely. great this season. We've, uh, we've actually got about a few of them here just playing games uh, around where our, our semifinal is happening yeah. tonight. A lot of them just tickled pink with excitement. There's there, about three people sitting, four people sitting around watching this game too. So it's true. It's always nice. Very true. Always nice to see. There we go. Finally using the uh... What is Joe doing? Somebody needs to remind Joe to roll in the dice tray. 
Uh, not when you roll like that, actually. Forget rolling the dice tray. So that was a range three obstructed shot from Pierce Sabak on, on Genesis. Genesis Red. So, but why did Pierce Sabak only roll three dice? Perhaps Kelvin forgot the pilot ability? I've made that mistake on stream, so. It's happened. Or maybe he, he just took it out quickly. Maybe I missed it. Sunny Bounder uh, left to shoot. Actually, sorry, a Mega Leader going to shoot at Sunny Bounder. Range two. But why not Genesis, Genesis Red? Well, I guess Sunny Bounder's got no uh, no tokens either. He had a barrel roll. He did have to barrel roll. He's a blocker and a half. That's and he's job. got him target locked. I mean, I should really shut up. I mean, he's got no tokens anyway, so it doesn't really matter who he shoots at. Yeah, Mega Leader gets to use those uh, target locks defensively as much as offensively as we saw yeah. um, in the the other match we streamed today, which won't get you know it'll come out a different time, but in your match where um, against Jeff, where, where Mega Leader uses that target lock offensively and surprises many people, can often catch your opponent off uh, well, guard. The decimator doesn't have any dice to mod on defense, so it's true. Yeah. It's true, but when the decimator's shooting back at you and there's a general hux involved, the defensive target lock with the Mega Leader can be very very uh, important. Uh, or you use it to land a Jeff pilot. was very cognizant of that throughout the entire match. It was a great match. It or was. I mean, he could, or he lands a blinded pilot. So that is. So we're happens. seeing. So the heavy seek title yeah. gives the seek an extra hull. Yeah. As well as the option to take either a missile, a torpedo, a, or a cannon. Yeah. The, I think Victor's just checking to make sure that everything's being played right. Yeah, I think you're right. And then the Light Seek title that uh, Sunny Bounder has yeah. is a new title off of the recently released Sea Rock. It's uh, a great title, too. It is a great title. Minus two points to the cost of your ship. As well, it uh, says all of your bank maneuvers are now green, but the price for that is that if you take any damage cards, whether they're hits or crits, all damage cards are dealt to you face up. So Sunny Bounder... Uh, adding a blank there with the pilot ability, but just completely missing. So here we go into the next round of combat. Uh, Kelvin, to my mind, has Joe right where he wants him. Yeah. Pierce Bach took no damage that round from Fenrau and a Mangler Cannon at range three. Like, I didn't expect that. I expected him to be at half hull at least with a crit on there, you know? Well, especially given the fact that now Kelvin, with his magnificent formation, can actually aileron move Sabak to block Fenrau's two bank, yep. clear that stress, and then followed up right behind by the Inquisitor. The Inqui Why don't you explain to the folks uh, who are trying to hashtag make Imperials great again? why the Inquisitor is a great piece against Fenrau, despite being uh, one pilot skill lower. So the Inquisitor gives an area of denial effect where the where Fenrau cannot go. Because the Inquisitor treats all attacks as if they're at range one. So Fenrau does not get his auto thrusters. He does not get his title because that's the Fenrau is not at range one of the Inquisitor. The Inquisitor's at range one of Fenrau. And uh, so it's three dice on three dice without auto thrusters. And, and that's and often Fen will only have a focus token. And Fen only has a focus token. So he's gonna be repositioning. So it's a pretty good piece. Uh, I've tried a VI Inquisitor with a coordinate, and that kind of worked okay. I'm not so great with the Sinars. Kelvin is, is sort of the Sinar master locally. Well, it's kind of a testament to Kelvin's character. Uh, I gotta love. I gotta say, I've learned so much from Kelvin. He's a great guy. But to go into a match super salty about a Fen Rao sending across the table from you, and you having two of the best ships in the game, Omega Leader and Inquisitor, to combat a Fen Rao is kind of like uh, complaining that the chocolate sauce on your birthday cake is not delicious enough. Well, some of us don't like chocolate sauce, Tim. Well, those people are crazy because chocolate is awesome. Are they wrong? They might be wrong. It'll be it'll be interesting. Maybe Joe does something funky with Fen again. Uh, I mean, it looks like Joe hasn't decided what to do with Pierce Sabak. But that is not what I expected from Sunny. Uh, do we have all? Yeah, all dials are down. Never mind. I was uh, expecting uh, a two bank. To I try think that's, and block that's a one, good move. That's the a good one move. hard because. There's a significant amount of uh, base plate rotation that will still occur from Omega Leader if Omega Leader did plug in a one hard that will probably still give Omega Leader arc. Interesting. He hasn't target locked Pierce Sabak. He target locked the Inquisitor. I'm not sure why, but that's what he did. Uh, the Sinar pilot moving up, taking a target lock on Sunny Bounder and getting a, a free evade from the title. 
Yeah. Interesting that Kelvin always opts to not load his Sinars with the two-point auto thrusters and just give them that title. Look, they're too cheap, Tim. Like, you got to run them cheap. They're fantastic blockers at 17 points. So, yeah. as expected, one yeah. tank, one hard, which is a great call by Kelvin. It blocks, it blocks the... I don't know if it blocks it. It might because of the angle that Fen has ended up at. It might it even might. block the two straight. That's yeah. crazy. You're right. Wow. I think you and I have been casting too long together, Deborah. We're starting to read each other's minds. Yeah, see, that, that's a good move. He blocked uh, He blocked a Mega Leader, but I would have target locked Pierce of Bach because getting damage on Pierce of Bach with Sunny Boundary is easy and it would have been great. He's not. Lightweight Frame's not going to proc. It's at range two. It's two dice on two dice. Sabak's got his focus. He's blocking one one damage you know like well this is this is a perfect opportunity to talk a little bit about what makes making a PTL cut and being great in our Toronto meta so difficult because in the PTL you get to this point in the season where you're top eight top four cut and you have run all the lists that you uh, are there's, there's the target lock on Fen that you're great with so Joe to his credit is a phenomenal phenomenal K-Wing pilot. I've seen him fly all kinds of different lists with K-Wings. He ran a little workshop for us on how to fly K-Wings. It was sure great. Did. Yeah. Unfortunately, one of the biggest differences between the list that Joes are accustomed to and, and uh, this list specifically is that there's arcs involved. So Sonny Bounder, for example, I think the reason that he didn't target lock Sabak. They need to keep track of their target locks, boys. Come on. Well, it's like you always say, right, Dev? Top-level X-Wing can sometimes look like low-level X-Wing. Yeah. I don't think that Sonny Bounder had any guarantee of having arc on Sabak after that move. So he took the safe bet and took a range two no, target lock. I think he did. He's got a range two shot on the Inquisitor, which isn't ideal, but it's better than nothing. I guess. The Inquisitor's not going to have auto thrusters either. True. I mean, if Sonny rolls a hit blank and target locks into another hit, he can add a third hit. Look at that beauty. I'm not going to say I called it, but... I mean, that was the first thing you said this round. He's going to, Sabak's going to go up and block the two bank. It's a phenomenal call by Kelvin, and it's not, it's not the worst call from Joe either, but again, I feel like there's been so much arc rotation from Omega Leader that Omega Leader will probably still have arc on Fen. Maybe. And Fen might just die to um, Inquisitor and Omega Leader here. So He's we're going to have the a, Inquisitor? Manger, a Manger Cannon shot from Genesis Red on pure Sabak. That's not what Sabak likes. That is not what Sabak likes at all. That is oh. a hit, hit, crit, crit. Lightweight frame, no, no damage. Starting the evade. Oh, he had an evade? Double crit coming through on Sabak. I feel like that was two crits. That yeah, was two crits. Okay, so we're just going to need... Yeah, there we go. Calvin's a gen. So we've got a double hit and a major hope reach. Yeah. So all damage cards dealt to uh, Sabak the following turn will be dealt face up. I hear I hear uh, strikers like that. Strikers like that about as much as a kick right in the junk. Next damage might be double damage. He's got seven and thirty-three. Sabak has one hull left, um, and then he's all. Ooh, Joe rolling red hot fire. No, oh, that's fine. Kelvin can uh, roll natties too. Kelvin rolling deep jade fire. Unbelievable. I'm going to change three? his name in the chat right now to deep jade. Deep jade? That's He's a, not going to get it, but... <laughs> we'll get it until this video comes out, Dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, it looks like the only chance that uh, Joe has to get some points this round is Oof. to finish off Pierce Bach with um, Sonny Bounder Inquisitor rolling hot fire on Fen. Tokenless Fen. No auto thrusters. Takes one. Takes one. That's a crit. Uh, Fenral taking one regular damage. Just the regular damage? Okay. Omega Leader, I uh, believe, has no arc. Or Omega Leader already shot, that's right. Yeah. And Fen evaded because it was range three and there's no target lock. Sinar Pilot Didn't taking matter. a range Uno on Sunny Bounder. This is uh, the PS2 blocker versus the PS1 blocker. Looks like they ruled that as uh, range one. Target locks into two hits. Oh, deep jade fire. These guys need to stop rolling so great. They're I, making us all look bad. I feel like I want to go take their dice and just like rub them a little bit because my dice never roll that well. Sunny Bounder. Spending the target lock on, uh, got it on Inquisitor. Sabaka Bates. No lightweight frames there. 
<laughs> Lightweight frames is procced how many times? Once. I feel like... In four shots. I feel like the two this points... This is why frames aren't good. Ladies and gentlemen, lightweight frames are not good on strikers. <laughs> See, I, I got to disagree with you that lightweight frames are great if you're running four uh, Imperial trainees and a Doom shuttle, then they but should But you could have drop it. all those frames and get another ship. An eight-point ship? I mean, like, you know, just need to, you know, run cheaper ships and then, uh, you know, cheaper add, than, add in a Cheaper category. than a PS1 <laughs> Imperial trainee. Yeah, it's called uh, an Interceptor, and it's better. The Alpha Squadron Pilot, 100% better. It's actually one of my favorite lists is you take um, uh, PS4 Saber Squadron uh, Interceptor and give it Swarm Leader, two Strikers, and then a Upsilon Shuttle for Coordinate. And then it's like... Our viewers cannot see the pain in my life right now if as I, you describe this list to me. If I told you that I'd beat a Holy Hera, praise be, with that praise list, be. would you believe it? I mean, yes. Because they would just, like... They just died laughing. That's my assumption. Your opponent died yeah. and was DQ'd and Hera, dropped from the tournament. Hera was so distracted on the Bridge of the Ghost that she was just sitting there laughing, laughing yeah. her ass off that she actually just crashed the ghost into an asteroid. Yep. Yeah. Sounds about right. Interesting turn here coming up. Uh, we've got a lot of the jockeying for position done. Uh, Kelvin making what I would only constitute as brilliant trades for the approach he's now got Joe in a position where he can trade so he can use the Inquisitor to block Fen this turn and yeah. then get Sabak behind Fen Sabak has a target lock on no Sabak has no target lock he doesn't have target locks because the ship is bad Joe, uh, there Tim well you know how they say Imperials have great pilots and sh shite ships right I say that that is what I say I think I say that I, I said it and then you copied me no That's folks he, he says it like every week it gets a little yeah. old but anyway now, uh, I'm expecting a K-turn, to be honest, out of Sabak. He'll just, like, embrace the variants. He's got one hull left. He's just going to throw dice at, at a Seek and do damage. That's my. That's what I think is going to happen. That's ballsy. He can, like, he can, he can aileron and then K-turn. And it's going to be sweet. He's going to be out of arcs. Joe's not going to expect it because it's just so sloopy. I feel like Joe may not be the best scum pilot, but he's probably guessed that. Uh, I feel like... So yeah, this is another good maneuver with Sunny. I like the way Joe's flying Sunny. Um, but, you know, he's got the target lock on the wrong ship, and he's needs to... Sunny he's, can barrel roll here and block the Inquisitor. Oh, interesting. Joe's not going for the block. He's going for the shot. Yeah, he's got the target lock on it. I mean... I don't know if it'll do damage, and he's like, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Kelvin's so. like, sure, you yeah. want to put there, that's fine. I don't want that to bump because I want my Inquisitor to be able to do a one bank and just hurt Fen all day long. Now, that's a PTL Inquisitor, isn't it? A push, so he, a push to limit Inquisitor? It is, yeah. yeah, so he could do like a one bank and then boost and barrel roll and or boost and target lock and be well out of Sunny's arcs because the, the closer you are to a ship, this is sort of counterintuitive. But the closer you are to a ship, the easier it is to dodge that arc. Correct. Because the that boost and that barrel roll can get you that's out of there. That's how geometry works. That is how geometry works. I did pretty well at geometry in school. I did too. I loved geometry. It was great. Math, terrible. Geometry, pretty good. Physics and geometry were two of my favorites, yeah. Physics was too much philosophy for me. <laughs> All so right. we got Sinar going in with a boost, trying to block much, Ben's escape. Too much math. This is... Mega Leader oh. going to bump on a rock. Uh, Kelvin getting a bit greedy there. Should have done the one turn. Yeah. Probably expected another block from, from Sunny Boundary there. Yeah. Well, you know, he's got a focus. He's gotten a, a target lock on Sunny. I mean, we're probably not going to see anything from Fen. Is that not on the rock? I think, you know, it's on the rock. He didn't take an action. Which means he has to roll for damage, right? Uh, yeah. We were right, aileron bump, and uh, aileron lock. bump K-turn from Sabak here. Target lock turtle there, because the, uh, the Sinar blocked the boost. You know, our Lord and Savior, Alan Fung and Kelvin, are both equally magnificent um, Inquisitor pilots. And the one thing that I find that makes the Inquisitor such a hard ship to fly mm. is the fact that 
it's it, when it first came out, it was amazing. The the greens that it had on it. But now in the meta, those greens are almost counterproductive. You've got the two straight, three straight, four straight, which are green. Yeah. And then you've got the one banks and the one turns, yeah. which are great at blocking PS9s, but they're terrible at pursuing PS9s. Oh, this is this is going to be interesting. It's a big problem for a PS9 ship here. We got Fen at range two of Sabak on his six. Fen at range one of the Inquisitor. And if the Omega Leader is indeed not on that rock. Well, Fen is going to get his title to proc. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's over there. Yeah, that's Sunny's target lock, isn't it? Yeah. And here is Genesis. So that was Genesis Red's target lock. Yeah. No, Genesis, yeah, I suppose it is. So Genesis Red, going to barrel roll for the shot. It might, it might have a shot right now. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh, that's no, I'm wrong. No, no, there's no shot. Everybody, I clinch. thought there was a bit. I was a, thought there was a bit more of an angle on it. Joe's not taking any chances. He's gonna barrel roll for that shot, try and finish off that striker before it shoots, because the Seeks do have a one heart. They do. So they don't that, have a three heart, which well, makes that, them bad. I know that this list has gotten many nicknames. There's Lingdenberry. There's a few other things. Personally, because it has two Seeks in it, I like the name. Seek refuge because it's three PS9 ships coming your way, and that's Joe's saving grace. He, Joe rolling the Mangler cannon, just uh, hot fire, just ending Pierce Box day. Lightweight frame, and he's off the board. That was close, though. That was two evades and an eyeball. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. almost deep jade fired uh, Kelvin into a, a great spot. Okay, and the Inquisitor so has Genesis target lock, not Fen Rao. Interesting. So we've got Fen Rao, range one of two different ships. Uh, of course, I've of course. i got to say, Joe, this is a, not the, the call that I would have made. I would have shot at the Inquisitor. Oh, sorry, I would have shot at Omega Leader because Omega Ugh. Leader doesn't have a no target No damage, lock nothing. You so rarely see that with Fen. Five dice? Having, oh. Ooh. Fen just la evades. laughing maniacally at the PS8 Imperial ships here. I've been there so many times. So this is the Inquisitor shooting at Genesis, and that's a dead Genesis. I like that call. I like that call. Inquisitor didn't have proton rockets. Inquisitor's only got three dice against four with title against Fen, so we might put a damage or two through. Whereas he can get rid of that Mangor Cannon and eliminate uh, Joe's ability to have a second flank. Yeah, that's, that's the way that, that's, that's the way Sunny works. You roll yeah. three hits, you add it, you add a fourth hit. After rolling or re-rolling, yeah, Kelvin, Jen, Sunny's just that good. It is now the best 12 points in the game, there, Doug. Yeah. Find me another 12-point uh, ship that rolls four dice at range one. Big. They're just going to get a quick judge yeah, call to confirm yeah. uh, how yeah. Sunny Bonder works. It's after Kelvin. Yeah. Yep. Sorry. Yep. That is the way Sunny Bounder works. Uh, so Kelvin is going to spend his evade token and take two damage on the Inquisitor. Oh. He needs the Inquisitor alive to kill Fen. Now, our uh, one of our other local PTLers, uh, Jackie, or Fortress Jackula, used Sunny Bounder against me a couple weeks ago. And this exact thing happened to me. It's infuriating. I was like, no, it's us. It's a seat. It doesn't have a cannon. How does it roll four dice? It doesn't. It rolls three. And then it adds one with Sunny's ability. So Ugh, that after just rolling happened. or re-rolling. Yeah, it's a good ship. Now Great that being ship. that being said for twelve points? That being said, you're absolutely right. Twelve points. Phenomenal. Um, I still like Kelvin's chances. Yeah, me too. You know, the Inquisitor has every avenue of escape open to him with his straights to continue the pursuit of Fen. Uh, I don't like Fen's one hard right up board. I don't I'm expecting a, a five forward bail. I'm not. I don't like the Talon rolls. I don't like the five forward because I think that might hit the rock. I don't think so. I don't think the angle's right. But I do like a three hard turn left. From Fen? Like downboard? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because if Sonny just one banks into the Inquisitor, he could probably block Omega Leader. Omega Leader doesn't want to actually engage this turn. Omega Leader wants to bail and then get a target lock on Fen forever. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Megan was like, even if I don't ever do any damage to you again, and I'm just 26 points running on the board, I want to have a target lock on you so that you can't chuck five dice at me. And trading, trading Sabak for Nadru and Gensis is an amazing trade. Yeah, I mean, he's also traded two shields on the Inquisitor, which is like a one health bend. Inquisitor is just as da dangerous with one hull as he is with uh, full shields, but I agree with you. I mean, you, um, Kelvin has traded uh, 51 points for 25 points. So the Inquisitor is sitting at range one of Sunny Bounder and, the, and Pierce Sabak, and he only took two damage. That's, that's a pretty good round. Still pretty good. I mean, that's yeah. why I chose the Inquisitor for my top eight uh, match. Yeah. Once you get through uh, a PTL season, and a lot of our uh, players, both newer and experienced players, have used more and more of some of the great ships in the game, some of the golden oldies like Omega Leader, like uh, Suntir Fell, like Poe Dameron, mm -hmm. become actually amazing because the perfect counters for those your opponent can't feel because they've, they've flown them already. Yep. And that's all public knowledge. You can go back and you can look at what your opponents have flown. Yeah, because we don't want to hide anything from each other. It's all about friendly competition. And it becomes a BTL. great game. Like you were saying how Jeff really tries to pick and choose his ships based on what his opponent is flying it's or like, has flown. Yeah, it's like the game of poker. You don't really always in poker play your your hand that you have. You play the man across from you at the table or the woman across from you at the table. And, you know, Jeff... Ooh, early, interesting. Earlier this evening when he was playing against you... He did the same thing he did against me. He was like, I know what I'm good with, but I know what my opponent's good with. I know that Tim usually brings ghosts. I know that Devin usually brings swarms. So I'm going to bring what's good against that. And he probably thought that you were showing up tonight with a seven-tie crack swarm, so he showed up with some, re re some reposition aces and whisper, which is perfect. Um, if you haven't get a chance, folks, by the way, uh, our friends at VWTV Live have already probably at this point Posted the um, the first of the two top four matches that was filmed earlier tonight. I really encourage you to go take a look. Is this at that a sloop match. or it's, he's uh, just getting out right of dodge? Now, the uh, the tie FO only has a two sloop in there. Ah, uh, right. I've three bank bail target lock. I only fly Zeta leader, and he's always stressed, so I never do that. Yeah, but it's okay. No worries. Sloops are cool though. Sloops are very cool. Yeah, the only ship that has a three sloop, that, to my knowledge, is the aggressor, because scum is totally fair and balanced. You've flown Guri before. Just pointing that out. I don't know what you're talking about. Guri doesn't have three sloop. It's definitely not good for dodging ghosts. <laughs> oh, Billy. So we've got the target lock from Omega Leader on Sunny Bounder. Interesting choice. And then we've got um, uh, Inquisitor who has... Sunny Bounder is the only ship with a shot right now, so... Unless Fen 4Ks. Never tell Joe the odds, as his templates tend to say. Mm. Doesn't look like it's in the middle there, Joe. We're going to have to mark the Inquisitor because you can't actually move a ship to the side with your... Uh, <laughs> your he's just going to... Or he's <laughs> oh. just... Oh, God, Joe. Well, it's like we said in the last match we had a Joe on stream. Just, just to make sure, folks, you're, the aspect ratio on your television is not malfunctioning. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going over that rock because he didn't get that, that maneuver template in straight. I right? think you're right. Oh, my God. If your aspect ratio is not malfunctioning, Joe really is that much bigger of a man than Kelvin. Um, and speaking as a man who's not small myself either. Interesting. Um, Interesting. I can tell you that the game of X-Wing can often be challenging when your hands are massive. So, Made of sausages. They're not made of sausages. They're just sausage size. They're good for like palming a basketball. That's what that's what they're good for. I've I've noticed there's a there is a correlation between <laughs> between players who do well and players who are tall. Well, Duncan Howard is a very tall man. Uh, it helps being the, a male. Our Lord and Savior Fung. Uh, Alan Fung is like twelve foot nine. Spencer, so. the previous uh, Canadian national champion. Spencer right. McClung, he's good six two or something. Yeah. Um, myself, I'm six two and a half. Yeah. Uh, James Ling, very tall. James Ling's very tall. I mean, being a tall man... Joe's very tall. Joe's very tall. I mean, it, it, being a tall person is helpful because you actually get a more beneficial vantage point of the board. But that's not to say that a man of a stature... Because Kelvin's like, what, five foot two, five foot one? I'm just joking, Kelvin. I know he's not that short, folks. But um, Devin I, really I is. I hear it's beneficial in judo. It is very beneficial in judo. 
Uh, but no, I mean, a, a person who's on the shorter side can always just show up with, uh, you know, a stack of 12 or 15 telephone books and just stand on top of those, right? I'll try that next time. You should try that next time. <laughs> what the heck is going on right now? I don't even know what is happening right now. Dan. Okay, so we've got to sign our shot on Sonny and or Fen if he wants. Uh, I, mean, I mean, sure, you can. And Sonny's can return fire on any ship. Yeah. He might be, the Inquisitor might have a shot at him. Pretty sure we didn't trade any damage that turn there, Dev. But I think that, I think that the Inquisitor's got Fen where he wants him now. It was an interesting choice by Joe there to push for the target lock. Personally speaking, I would have opted not to push for the target no, lock. No, in that situation, you really want your dial entirely open. I really would have wanted the three hard turn from Fen Rao the following turn, but you the, know what? The two, the two bank and the two hard are going to be very predictable there. Not that Kelvin can really capitalize on that without uh, rockets, but I think with the Sinar and the Omega Leader coming around, uh, it's gonna be as long as Joe can get out of this, get out of this round with less than one damage taken. Well, Kelvin's not a, Kelvin's one not, damage uh, or less. Kelvin's not a rookie. He's he's a very experienced player. He understands not just about flying your ships, but he also about understands about tactics of uh, controlling the clock and controlling the board. So, I don't think there's anything wrong with guessing that uh, Kelvin will opt to disengage with the Inquisitor for as long as it takes to uh, get Omega Leader back into the fight. Yeah, and Omega Leader can hunt from range and try and, you know, push out that range two shot on defend and just slowly put damage on him. Well, that's the thing. I mean, at this point, uh, Joe has an amazing piece with, uh, with Fen Rao, but Kelvin has these two sharks in the water for Joe's whale and all these sharks have to do is wait for the right moment and get at Fen from range two or three. It, it's all about balance, right? Using your opponent's weight against you. So like Fen Rao is gonna be very aggressive and and Kelvin's been been abusing that. And and he's been able to, you know, keep Joe off balance and he's deleted Nadru and, and Genesis Red. Which to the just in case you do come up against this list those are one of the two pieces that I always go for first as well, followed by Sunny. Uh, I feel Nadru that Nadru needs if, if to you're, die. If you're trying to go after Fen while Nadru is around, you're gonna die. I watched, I watched one of the, this this list being played, and homing, homing scavenger crane procked four times in a game, yeah. and it's like you got a one health Nadru that's pulling back up homing homing missiles or concussion missiles and shooting again. And you're just like, oh, Sonny dies, and he gets missiles back. Well, it's that's so it. frustrating. Nadru doesn't even need to kill somebody. Nadru can shoot first, damage them. Fen can finish them off, and then he gets his missile yeah. back for the following turn. Here we go. So there's Kelvin target locking. Fen, I think that's a great great place to be. I got to disagree with you, mate, honestly, because the two bank here. I think he did the hard two. Uh, nope. Oh. No, he's going for the bank two, because I think the two So are... now the Inquisitor's not in his arc, right? So he's forcing Joe to either turtle there and be stressed, which he can follow again or without getting shot, right? He's not getting his title. And then, or if he boosts and barrel rolls for position to try and get out of arc, he's, the, the two hasn't carried him far enough to get out of arc. And the Inquisitor doesn't care how what range you're at. I mean, Joe can barrel roll out to two, but the Inquisitor still treats him at one. Like, what are you doing, Joe? Right? Like, uh, now he's only going to have one defense token. He's not going to be range three. He's not getting auto thrusters because it's the Inquisitor. I'm afraid the, the boost is definitely not going to give you arc on uh, on the Inquisitor there. Joe. No. It, it, would, it wouldn't matter in a million years. That's not how geometry works. And and now he doesn't have a shot at all. And no defensive token. And no tokens, right? And, so he's that range, was, and he's range two. He doesn't even get his bonus die. I didn't get his bonus die before because they weren't in. Oh, because he's. Oh, I was thinking of the title. Yeah. He would have just gotten raw dice before. Yeah, but like four dice with a focus on defense against three dice is not terrible. Well, he could have focused. Oh, he can't evade. My bad. Uh, Take a hit crit on Fen Rao. Uh, that's not what like Fen Rao likes to see with one damage. Tactical miscall. Just shows, to, I mean, Fen Rao is one of those pieces. If you fly him enough, you know that uh, range one is always, always safer. Uh, uh, we got a little bit of a thing here, so we're going to... Both of them are hit. casual players. No worries. Are you going to show us, Joe? Major hull breach. 
Not that it matters. He's on one hull. It's actually the best possible third uh, card being a crit that you can get on Fenrao. One hit. And he's going to spend the target lock on Sunny Bounder. Trying to kill Sunny Bounder with a juke two, here. Two hits. So he jukes the evade. Yeah. One shield, and then that hit is face up on Sunny Bounder. If it's direct hit, it's dead. Nope. Loose stabilizer. That means if uh, Sunny does a white, he takes a stress there, Dev. Yeah. We got a hit crit from the Sinar on Sunny Bounder. Sunny Bounder dying to a crit. Yep. There you go. Away you go, Sunny. I feel like this match could not have gone better for Kelvin. No. Everything has gone. Well, when I say everything's gone his way, he has set it up and he has made it go his way. Well, I'm, I'm so happy that we got this match on stream, Dev, because one of the things that I want to uh, just focus on as the match comes to its conclusion in the next couple of turns is this. Yeah. This goes out to all the newer players that think that just because Fen Rao is on the table, that the list you're playing against is super unbalanced and that there's nothing that can do against it. And, and look at that maneuver there with Joe where he barrel rolled and boosted. Joe's been playing for four years. A four-year veteran can still make that mistake. Yeah, I mean, it's, it just has to go. Like, you know, with Fen Rao, you're always safer at range one than you are at range two because you've got that extra defensive die, and all you need to do is take that eyeball, and you're mitigating more damage. Now, what do you think Fen's going to do? Too hard in? No, I think Fen's just going to one hard. I think Inquisitor's going to go two straight, and I think that uh, Fen Rao's going to one turn, and I think that the Sinar pilot yeah, he's is going to... stress. I think the Sinar pilot's going to finish off Fen Rao at range two. All right. Because, to Kelvin's credit... He... Why, why, did, why did the evade go over on Fen Rao? Uh, because I think they're both a bit excited. Yeah, I'm Kelvin. Sure Kelvin's not. Kelvin, Kelvin's about as jittery as a June bug. Yeah, he's not paying too much he attention. <laughs> beat this list on stream. Hey, does uh, does he have that on his action bar? I don't know. He does not. So, Kelvin has been uh, involved in many Prototype Toronto top cuts over the last few seasons. In the last uh, almost two years that I've known him. Him versus Jeff is going to be a killer game. The it's top two Imperial pilots from Naboo. The two top Imperial pilots, and I'm going to beg them. Devin begged them to play Imperialists. I mean, and, they've, got, they've, they've got, flown they've so got, many. They've got none left, and I think they both use bigs too. So it's oh like God. we're going to have like Poe Dameron versus like the Millennium Falcon in the final or something oh. like that. Um, but what I was just trying to say, Kelvin's been in lots of PTL cuts, but um, I myself have uh, knocked him out, um, and he's been knocked out by a few other people later in the seasons. To see him get to the point where his persistence and his patience with the meta uh, paying off in this way, are it's really refreshing because I mean what I say. Folks, don't get um, completely uh, put down by Fenral. There are lots of mechanisms on all three factions that can combat a Fenral. Absolutely. Dash Rendar is one of them. Ugh, Dash. Yeah. Um, you've got... Uh, Poe at PS9 if you win the initiative bid. Yeah. Right? You can BB8 reposition him. No, you got Ray at PS10. Just bid down to 95. You can do that in a Rebel list, right? Sure can. And you got all these Imperial tools we were that talking Rebel, about. The Rebel Junkyard, that Fairship Rebel, the Pew Squadron, whatever you want to call it. Just four janky Rebel ships going, what is happening? Yeah, Captain Rex at Pilot Skill 12. Checking for range 2 that there. That looks range 2 to me. That's rolling a fourth die for range three. That's good it. game, good game. Excellent game by our two players. Once again, we'd like to thank uh, VWTV Live for casting was, our match. That was some some great flying from Kelvin. That Fantastic. was incredible. Folks, don't forget to tune in. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have the PTL Season 8 Grand Final coming to you live. With Kelvin and Jeff, we can Kelvin say that Lyle right now. Kelvin and Jeff Basiri are going to be our two finalists, and uh, we're going to be uh, casting that one. Yep. We are your hosts. I'm Timbo Slice. I'm Devin. Thanks, guys. We're PTL.